Hi everybody. In this video I want to show you how to make um, buttonholes. Now I have two machines that do buttonholes differently and um, I'm just going to discuss a couple different things before we get started. But you can do buttonholes on a hair. I have a, a cotton canvas. I've got a regular uh, cotton fabric and with a canvas you don't have to worry about this but you can just do a buttonhole straight on this and probably this one as well but when you're working with a very thin or more delicate fabric um, I like to use a tearaway stabilizer and all I do is just put it behind it put your buttonhole on you know, sew it on and then when you're done you just pull it off that just helps your fabric from uh, scrunching up or gathering when you're sewing those zigzag stitches so um, I'm going to show you on this piece here with a stabilizer and I'm going to show you two different ways of doing it with two different presser feet. Now this is a standard um, buttonhole foot and with this one um, you have to either measure your button on your fabric and just you would just have mark it a little bit above up here and then below give it some space because you have to account for the thickness of the button as well so that's not how I do it what I do is I lay my button here like over the red lines and then you know, determine how by the by the lines here how many I need to do so this one is exactly five lines um, long and so I would move up to about five and a half so what this is there's two little lines on the slider and I would just align this wherever I want it here so from this button it's going to be one two three four five and a half I would align it here and then put my presser foot down and start sewing. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so this is the four step buttonhole and these are the steps. That means for every side that I wanna do, I'm gonna to have to turn this dial. This right here is the stitch length, how far apart your zigzags are. So one would be, you'll see fabric in between the, the threads and a zero would be it sews in place and it doesn't move and then you'll have a mess on your hands. So I want mine so it's not at zero. I'm going to have it somewhere right here. Do a test first to find out what you want your buttonhole to look like. That way you have all the settings ready to go before you sew your actual garment. Now um, sometimes, now this is a standard um, snap-on foot. Some machines have the presser foot where you just drop it down and it clicks. This one pushes into my my uh, bar so I'm going to just snap it in. I like to take my needle thread and put it through this hole and all the threads go out the back. Now I've got my stabilizer, my tearaway stabilizer on the back, have my fabric on the front. I'm going to lay it down and align the red marks on the slider to five and a half bars up the side of the frame. So now all we need to do is just sew. So we're on number one, so we're going to sew the left side. It looks like my it looks like my stitches are a little bit too far apart. So when I get to the end, I'll adjust that. And I sew until the slider hits the very end and won't go any further. Okay. I pull the needle out of the fabric. I move it to two. And you only need to do this just a couple of times. You don't want there to be a big bunch of thread here. So that's four. Needle up. Go back to three. This time I'm going to make it a little shorter. I'm just going to take one notch, see what that looks like, and then try again.
Okay, that side looks much better. Now be mindful when you get closer to that end, you don't want to extend one side too far and then when you do your bar tack, you miss it. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, it looks like I'm at the very end. Okay, needle up and you're going to switch over to number four. And that will finish it off. Now what I do is I take, make sure the needle's up. I go to number or letter B because that's, that's the left needle position. And then I go to zero because I'm just going to tie this off. So four stitches in one place, it should tie it off. And that's what it looks like. And you can see the different um, stitches. I'll get it closer so you can look at it. See how this one's a little further apart? And this is like a really nice satin stitch. So now I'm going to put a pin right at the end of it. Because sometimes if you're working with a dull uh, seam ripper or you're working with bulky fabric, Sometimes it can get iffy <laughs> and you you hit a, a tough part and then you push and then it goes all the way through and that's a pain. So I made a little hole. I'm just going to put the tip of my seam ripper in there and slowly and I'm using my hand against my, th my finger to kind of just go slow and be able to control how fast my um, seam ripper is moving. When you get to the end you can't get any further than that pin. Now see, I didn't open it all the way. And I do this on purpose because sometimes I don't gauge it accurately. And so, see like this right here? It's not going through. So I can always take this and snip it open a little bit more. And that's a nice, that's a nice size buttonhole for that. So, um, for a basic buttonhole, this is good. Um, I would not use this on a stretchy garment. Working with stretchy garments, um, a buttonhole is not always good until you stabilize the garment, but also you can help stabilize your buttonhole, and I'll show you how to do that on the next machine. Okay, on the second machine, this is a... Um, it's an automatic button holder and what I really love about it is I can put my button in the back and that will determine how long the button hole will be. Now this doesn't work on every machine. You have to have a, a lever on your machine that you pull down and will come between these two marks, these two tabs here. And what that does is when you start sewing, it'll come back here, hit that lever, which makes it stop. It'll do this, the side zigzag and it'll come forward till it hits this one and it'll stop again. It's really cool. I really like it. And um, so, but there is something really interesting about this machine, this machine I'm going to show you on, how it does its, its buttonholes because they're a little bit different, uh, more than just a four step and an automatic and I'll show you when I get there. Okay, what makes this interesting is this little lever here. With this lever, I'm able to use the button hole foot that I have. This is the key to making it just really fun and super, super easy. So I'll show you how that works. Okay, this machine is fun. So here are all my stitches and I'm going to use stitch number 35 just a basic buttonhole, but there's different ones and you can just adjust your settings um, Right here Sorry guys, my lighting is just really bad. Hopefully you can see everything But what's more fun is the buttonhole foot Okay, so for this one, I'm going to put the button in the back push it down snugly to make sure it's in there and then I'm going to 
Okay, this one's a little bit different. I'm going to drop the thread through this little hole right here. So this presser foot looks a little different than the other one. But again, I just don't like the threads being pulled or the possibility of them getting stuck somewhere. And this is just going to drop down onto that bar and it's in. So what we need to do here is we need to lower this bar and it has to go behind this one, but in front of the other one. So it's down. Don't forget on thin fabrics to use your tear away stabilizer. I'm going to put this back here. Now, because it starts here, it's going to start sewing back first and then it'll, it'll hit this lever and then bring it forward. So I'm going to make sure I have an, plenty of room for this. Now this is the one I want you to pay attention to because the other one went straight into a zigzag. This one doesn't do that. So I'll just make sure I have everything set. Straight stitch going back. Come back forward with a straight stitch. Do the zigzag. And go up the other side. Straight stitch. Bar tack the front, zigzag the side. And bar tack the back. And this one stops all by itself. And that's that one. Now, I'm going to clean up the threads I can get into there. And then when it's finished, you just pull this off and then press it. Now, what I liked about this is it had a straight stitch back, a straight stitch forward. So now your fabric's not going to stretch out of place. Then it zigzags it. It comes over here, straight stitch this way, zigzag here, zigzag back, and then bar tacks the back. So this is a pretty stable um, buttonhole. And then the same as last time, put your pin in there. And then go all the way up. Now at this point, after you open it, you can clean up the threads in here and use um, fray check. I'm sorry, that's what it's called. I don't, I don't use it. One time I did this and I made the mistake of pressing something while it was still wet and it changed the color. So just eliminate those problems for myself. <laughs> anyway, so that's it. I hope you guys like this. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, then consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.